Hey guys, it's Anthony. Welcome back to the channel. Today we had FOMC and we had a decent drop, but then obviously massive spike at 2.30 up into new highs for the day. And previously in pre last videos, I said that I thought that FOMC would put a cap on this rally and we're rallying after hours. We got to about 15,220 during trading hours, but then after hours, boom, we're just rocking it up more. So in today's video, we're talking about where the market went and where we think the market's going in the coming weeks. If you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, definitely hit that subscribe button. I personally trade ES and NASDAQ futures, which is S&P 500 futures and NASDAQ futures. So if you trade that, definitely subscribe. So without further ado, let's let's dive into the charts here. So we're taking a look at NASDAQ. I basically drew a FIB retracement recently on the weekly chart because we kind of went straight up. So I was looking more for, for a retracement. I was looking to get in a short once we break market structure to the downside, targeting uh, about a 50% retracement from this weekly low that we put back uh, at the end of April since we just went straight up. Like obviously you just look at this chart, went straight up. Once we do confirm a high, I'm expecting a, a pullback to about 50% retracement. I'm looking at a target about 14,100 in the coming four weeks from about June 15th to July 15th. Previous videos, if, if you've been on the channel, you know, previously I said that I'm looking for a, a correction from about June 15th to July 15th. Today's the 14th. So, you know, since we're rallying after hours, I really do think that we can make a higher, higher tomorrow and then that make that marks the top. One of the biggest reasons why is because of the put to call ratio. It actually jumped today. So at previous tops, the put-to-call ratio was at lows. Yesterday we are at lows, and then boom, we had a pretty big spike in the put-to-call ratio today. So one more green day. Whenever the put-to-call ratio spikes, it means a lot of people bought puts. So market makers want to stop those people out before going to the downside. So I think tomorrow, Thursday, we could have a green day, right? Stop people out and then start to turn after Thursday, after June 15th. Right now, I'll show you uh, something. I've been like taking a look at this resistance here to the left uh, up in NASDAQ on the weekly chart. That's why I drew out this box. So basically, I was I was thinking the most we would get up to is about 15,300. So tomorrow, if we get above 15,300 and close above there, then I don't see why the next target wouldn't be 15,800 before correcting. In my opinion, that would be just too insane based on the things I'm seeing, but obviously it's possible. But for me personally, I am out of longs. I took, I took I actually got in some longs on NASDAQ today because I, I, know, I see a pattern with, with FOMC typically whatever happens at 2 p.m. by about 2.35 p.m. would do the opposite. So basically once we put this bottom bar here, uh, I got in a long and then the stops were just below the lows and I was targeting above this high because we typically do rotate back up. So I got in about a one-to-one. -one. It was a pretty risk-free trade. I ended up getting about 15.60 and then uh, my stop was just below at 97 and then uh, TP was just above. So about a one-to-one, -one. Uh, I took about 85 points on that. That was a good scalp. But no, nothing huge, no huge size, because I'm kind of waiting for to get in on the short side once we do break market structure to the downside. So for now, I'm just going to be uh, patiently waiting and not swinging anything overnight. And we're just watching the NASDAQ continue to rip higher as it's been going vertical. S&P 500 did have a little more weakness than the NASDAQ. And previously, I thought that right now we'd have a rotation where we go a little higher. We go up faster on ES than NASDAQ. Uh, we are near these weekly highs, so it looks like... I don't see why we don't take out these weekly highs on ES at about 44.60 before going down. So maybe tomorrow we get a push up and then head back down. But on NASDAQ, uh, risk reward looks great for a short once we do confirm the break to the downside. I would like us to break below these recent lows at about 14,970. And then, you know, we could continue to break down to support and maybe make a retracement back up. Once we make a retracement back up, I'll be short in about 15,000, stop being above the current highs and then targeting a FIB retracement at about 50%. So what I'd be personally looking at, like I said, once we break below about 14,960, uh, once we come back up, I could get in uh, a short, and then at least I have a high to put the stop by. So say we get up to about 15,280, my stop would be 15,280, and then uh, TP would be down at the 50%, down to the support here. And then we'd be looking at a, a good three to one risk reward ratio. So this is a good trade after we have confirmation breaking to the downside on the daily chart. Obviously, we can't just keep shorting. You can't just keep shorting highs because highs can go higher. So we're just taking a look at NASDAQ there. Another thing, obviously, VIX sold off aggressively. VIX keeps getting suppressed. Nothing really looking good for confirmation there. SKFI, this is S&P 500 stocks above their 50 day average and it marks tops. You'll see if you go back every single time we get up here, this was a major top. This was the August top. You know what happened there. This was the uh, end of November top. You know what happened there. And this was also the February top. So you know what happened there. We're currently at the same levels. So very close to topping there. We're just gonna, we're about to turn. But again, this is on a weekly chart. So 
there could be another week or another two weeks of this before you go to the downside. At this point, I'm feeling like the correlation has broke with SPX and HYG. Previously, every single time, previously, wherever HYG went, then SPX followed. You'll see all throughout the past two years here, wherever it went, it followed. But now, recently, we've just been trending down on HYG, but we're way up here on SPX. SPX is looking a lot more bullish than HYG. It's smart money flow, typically, if it's low, then SPX falls towards it. Right now, it's not, it hasn't been working whatsoever. Here's NYA, we still do have the divergence, but I said this in previous videos, it's changed because previously, we were about there, but we had a breakout on the strength of the NYA as it's, it's kind of catching up. This is a red flag saying that we're not gonna get a major stock market crash if this pushes up, which I never thought anyways, I thought we'd just get a correction, but obviously the more this NYA pushes up to catch up to SPX, then it looks slim chances for a bigger correction on SPX. Here is RSP. Tip, uh, in previous videos, I, we did have this all the way down here, but in the last two weeks, breath did break out. It has been looking stronger. However, obviously it's still lower highs as we're making higher highs in SPX, so there's that divergence still there, but all these things are pointing to less of a correction on S&P 500. Here is the ratio between the NDX and Russell, and I was showing this in previous videos because this is the most extreme the ratio has been uh, past all other highs. Only time it was this extreme was the 2000 tech bubble. So as you can see right here, uh, in 2020 we got pretty high, and then we had a nice 14% correction in tech here. And then at the end of 2021, we had the all-time high uh, top. So massive correction after there. And now we're higher than both those times. And if you go back, if you scroll, the only time we were this high was March of 2000 at the end of there. And that was the dot-com crash. So this is another reason why I'm waiting for us to turn on NASDAQ so I can get in short on NASDAQ and not ride the long since we're just so extremely stretched at this moment. Uh, this is just the monthly chart here. Let me delete some of these fib retracements, but basically what you can see is we're just kind of making a V-shape. We sold off and we're right back up and we're close to 70% retracement of, of the entire decline, which is very impressive actually, this is very impressive. But once I see us trade into resistance here with no pullback, it's just a massive red flag of reasons why I am patiently waiting for us to turn so that way I could start to build shorts. Intraday, I'm just scalping longs until we get a turn. I just have a hard time holding a swing long but intraday, I've been, I've been scalping longs just using the daily bias because obviously we're going up. So why would you want a short intraday if we just keep going up? But once we get confirmation on the daily chart, like I showed previously of the breakdown, um, then I'll start to look for shorts. The dollar has been weak and selling off as well. So that's another reason why tech stocks have been rallying. We did at least push up. So, you know, the question is, are we putting in a higher low from this advance to go then cycle up and make higher highs? If so, obviously we'll have a lot of pressure on NASDAQ and uh, tech stocks in general. But right now, again, there's nothing really pointing to an impending doom and reason why, oh, like I need to jump in right short right now because yeah, we're stretched, but we've been stretched for a while and there's been these divergences, but they've been there for a while, many weeks of divergences. And I said this in previous videos, divergence can last a lot longer than you can remain solvent if you're trying to short based on a divergence. And I've learned that lesson plenty of times. So after being stopped out a few times, I'm just waiting for the turn to get in and then right on the way down after. That's gonna conclude the video. Thanks so much for watching. Hit this, hit the thumbs up button if you appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe if you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader and definitely look out for the next video coming out Sunday at 12 p.m. I post two videos a week. Let me know what you wanna see in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.